Which group is mad enough or strong enough to bring out two albums just a few months apart? Five Finger Death Punch, of course. Not only have they been one of America's most successful bands of the last decade, they're one of the most ambitious. Yet according to guitarist Jason Hook, despite appearances, not everything was planned. We came into the volume one thinking it was just going to be record number four. A brand new record from Five Finger Death Punch. In no way were we thinking it was going to be a double record at that point. Uh, we had started writing and recording songs on tour. That was the difference. We, we, we built this portable studio that we would took on the road and there was a lot, there's a lot of downtime during the day. So we decided, well, let's keep writing songs. So when it came to the downbeat of volume of the fourth record, we already had like eight or nine songs prepared. And so we were sitting there thinking, well, what do we do? You know, maybe we should just, con well, we should continue to write songs. But we couldn't, we wrote so many songs, we couldn't really decide which ones to ax, you know? How does he compare this record to the one released four months earlier? We distributed the songs evenly so that each volume had the same weight and feel. You know, kind of shuffled the deck like that. With the record industry in turmoil, isn't this approach a little surprising? We're in the business of selling songs. If we can agree that every business has some sort of product, our product is songs. That's what we sell. It doesn't seem smart to me that you would only start writing songs when you're done with touring and everything like that. It's like, like saying, you know, we sell sh running shoes, but we're going to only make r running shoes from January to you know, July. You do it all year. That's what they do. They just, they're thinking about how to sell running shoes, right? Well, we're, we're in the business of selling songs, so we have to be practicing how to be good at writing songs, because it's the only thing that matters, songs. In the past, Jason has worked with Alice Cooper and Vince Neil, but in the end, is Death Punch what satisfies him the most? If you're a musician and you have, like, the, the dream, the dream is really to be in a band. You know, I want to be in Kiss or I want to be in Van Halen or whatever. That's the, that's the ultimate destination. When you take these other opportunities to go play with other people, that's basically just trying to get as close as you can to happy. I get to make money, I can survive, I get to travel around the world, I get to play my guitar. But that's kind of like the B dream. I want to be able to write songs and make people happy and sell records. That's the A dream. So even though I was out playing with these other people, it was really all about the celebrity or whoever I was working for. It's about Alice Cooper, it's not about me. So there is that kind of like emotional frustration. Oh shit. <laughs> musician for a long time, so was becoming a full-time band member important to him? Playing guitar is great, but I always wanted to be a songwriter. That's the only thing I ever cared about. I wanted to be a songwriter. I want to be a songwriter because I think that's where you really make your mark. I have written hundreds of songs in many different projects, but to try to find a project that actually has a record deal where you can write songs and they get released to the masses and hopefully they like them. That's a very, very hard thing to accomplish. When I joined Death Punch, I made it very clear to them that I wanted to be part of the creative team. Um, I didn't just want to be a, a hired guitar player. And fortunately for me, they were at a, at a beginning stage where they were welcoming me on that level as an equal. What's it like seeing your album top the American charts? We try to keep our expectations at a reasonable level. It goes through such a process that uh, once we all can agree that it's, it's ready, it's usually pretty potent. And I, think that, and I think that we all just submit to the fact that it's beyond our control. We have a sort of a gauge, a little bit of a gauge on where the band's popularity is and what, what the albums should do, but we, we were very careful not to get too confident with that. It seems like every year we go up one notch. You know, last record was number three, this record's number two, 
but it's really hard to get that number one slot, you know. That's it for Metal Excess this week. You can catch this program plus bonuses on metalexcess.com. Thank you for watching and see you next week.